Welcome to the Amazon Lit Live. We're about to pump you full of information so you can be armed with the facts to grow your business. That's what we like doing over here. That's what we're going to continue to do. Got some people joining. Welcome, everybody. Congratulations on investing in your future by spending a couple minutes with yours truly, Eric from Amazon Lit. Happy to have all of you here. If you're just joining, say what's up. Want to know where you're from? Let me know where you're from. Put in the comments right now. I am in my warehouse in New Jersey. So I'm here for you. If you got any questions, first of all, welcome to our fulfillment center. Welcome to our distribution center. This is where we process all the magic that we provide you with on our Instagram account and YouTube and everything. It, it all happens right here, right in this place, right, right behind me. So super excited to spend the time with y'all inside of my, my place of business, our place of business. So if you got any questions, hit me with them questions. I'm here to provide you value, so don't be scared, don't be shy. The only dumb question is the question that you don't ask. Those are the dumb questions, the questions you keep up here. Those are the ridiculous questions. Do you do any private label? Yes, we do. We do do private label. Um, we own about four private label brands. Uh, two of them are grocery, and then we some baby, some home and kitchen. So we definitely do some private label, definitely healthier margins, but we've also had a lot of you know, trial and error with private label. We've created a lot of our own listings and our own products, and some of them have failed, and others have been really successful, and then there's some that just do like, eh. You know, but yeah, definitely we do some fun. Um, James said, I may need your help soon. Got a warehouse picked and need to design it now. Yeah, James, that's exciting stuff, man. That is exciting stuff. We're so happy for you. I hope that document I shared with you um, helps you really organize your warehouse properly and get everything you need to set it up. Um, something actually Sebastian and I do is we fly around the country and we, we spend two, three days with sellers and we help them set up their warehouse exactly how it should be. Um, but yeah, we're super excited about you. How, how many square, or super excited for you, how many square feet was it again? I know we talked about it briefly last night, but I don't remember. Um, Andre said, how do you go about paying yourself as an entrepreneur? So Andre, I know this is your first year in business. So other than putting gas in your car, maybe putting uh, some groceries in your refrigerator, you really shouldn't be paying yourself. Um, you know, you shouldn't be going out, shouldn't be going to bars, you shouldn't be going out to dinner, shouldn't be going to nightclubs, shouldn't be going on vacation. If you're a brand new entrepreneur, and I know you're young, so you'll have tons of time to do that shit in the future. You know, you don't need to go to Cabo for four days, or you don't need to go to Cancun for 10 days. You don't need to do that right now. You can do that in the future. Celebrate life in the future. Bust your ass now. So I would say based on how your business performs, other than taking out the daily necessities or weekly necessities that you need to survive, I would say based on how your business performs, um, give yourself a bonus. But as years goes on, as your years go on, you should really be paying yourself a salary. So a set salary, let's just say hypothetically, uh, eighty thousand dollars a year, right? So you would divide that by fifty-two, and that's how much you would make pre-taxes um, every week, and you would pay yourself either weekly or bi-weekly. Um, so it's all documented; it's all there. So you know, so when you pay taxes at the end of the year, everything's there, and then and then depending on how your business does, you can take a bonus at the end of the year. Anybody want to join this? Do we got anybody? Let's see here. Nobody wants to join. How long has Amazon been open for? I think Amazon 1994, I believe. Amazon. So like 20, what is that, 26 years? I believe it's 1994, if I'm not mistaken. Eric, how do you guys avoid 40 cent fee for sending in hazmat inventory? Um, what's the 40 cent fee you're talking about? I don't even know what the 40 cent fee is. 
we send a lot of we send a lot of hazmat, my friend. I'm talking today uh, over here in this corner over here, we got 15 pallets of hazmat that's getting picked up um, Friday for a Saturday appointment. There's no 40 cent fee on that, so I don't know what the 40 cent fee is. Um, but hazmat fulfillment fees are more expensive, definitely. What stuff in your warehouse is 220 volt special outlet requiring? Um, some sh some shrink tunnels. That's really it. I don't even think our our pallet jacks. I think they're just regular outlets. So there's that's really it. There's not much uh, 220 volt. Um, our forklift, which operates, but it operates, I think it's connected definitely to the, or I think it's connected directly to the breaker. Um, I'm not sure what that is. I'd have to look at that. What product did you start with? The first product we ever sold was a, uh, Welch's fruit snacks. It's like a 50 count or a 48 count from Costco. That was the first product we ever sold. Um, and the first order that we ever received was for 20 of them or 15 of them. And Sebastian got all excited and he was about to ship it and he realized it was from a buyer in like Japan. <laughs> so he had to cancel his first order. Two extra biscuits. That's what I'm talking about. Said when looking for a distributor, do I try to find a distributor for a specific product because I have been having trouble finding a liquidation center? I don't know what a liquidation center has to do with distributors, but to answer the first part of your question, and then you can maybe elaborate on why you threw the liquidation center in there, but I see this all the time, all the time. And I don't know what gurus are saying to go do it. I, well, I know a few that are saying to go do it, but I think it's a trash way to do product research. It's, listen, it's possible, but from my experience, when you do, essentially you're reverse engineering a product to find, right? So you find a good product and then you try to find a distributor to source that product. From our experience, when you do that, all of a sudden you have 50 saved bookmarks on your computer with all these products ranked, you know, 800 to 1,000 that are moving 8,000 to 10,000 units a month and you wanna get in that market but you can't find a distributor to have them. So the amount of time you're wasting reverse engineering these products to find distributors and you're not finding distributors, you could have just got any distributor and started buying some products. So we have a great video on our YouTube channel that actually goes into how to reverse engineer a product properly, the proper way so you're not spending hours a day. I know what that's like to be like, listen, I know that I want to sell this can of Monster. I want to sell it. I need to find a distributor who will source it and, and sell it to me. So I'm going to bookmark this Monster tab and 50 other tabs and try sourcing these products. And then turns out I have a lot of trouble finding a distributor for this Monster. Now the Monster is just an example. It's very easy to find a, a distributor who sells Monster. But it becomes complicated in the long run. Um, how can I determine if a seller is an authorized distributor or not? Keep them, my friend. I gotta look at them keep a charts, my friend. Third graph, look at the number of sellers on the graph. And if it has one consistently, then most likely, and then if you go to the first chart and the dots that represent the buy box are consistently that same seller and it's not, you know, different sellers rotating in and out of the out of the buy box, then absolutely. They are an authorized seller of that brand and you may run into some issues um, if you're gonna sell that product. You may get some cease and desist letters. You know, you may get some inauthentic product claims, um, which could become an issue and you definitely wanna be mindful of. So I, all the information's in Keepa. I'm actually, we've been thinking, and let me know if anybody would be interested in this. Uh, we were thinking, you know, it'd be low cost, you know, nothing crazy, less than a hundred bucks, but like a keep a fucking breakdown, you know, where we dive, you know, we spend two hours going into keep a with a group of people. And, and I, I think it would be super beneficial because if um, my philosophy 
and we train our buyers this same philosophy is if you could understand Kipo, you can build a really successful Amazon business because all of the information you need is in Kipo. It's in Kipo and it's on the Amazon listing. Ecom Dion said, does your course go over how to get a supplier to ship to Amazon for you? Absolutely, we cover all that. We cover how to use prep centers. We cover how to have uh, the supplier send it directly to Amazon. We cover how to prep the units yourself so you can prep them and save money on using a prep center. We cover all of that information. So, I mean, there's a, there's a few spots left. If you're interested, just send me a DM. Um, now, how do I get rid of this question? That's the, that's the real question is how do I get rid of this question? Um, here's another one. Wasn't eTales the first Amazon brand to go public? I know they were discussing going public, but I don't know if they actually ever went public. I'd have to Google that shit. I'm sure you, some of you are at a computer right now. If anybody can Google that and let me know. But I, I'm not sure. I remember that um, they were discussing Boeing going public, but I don't think they did. And now I think Anchor Direct is the first Amazon third-party seller to go public, which is huge for third-party sellers. Like a publicly traded, it's in the process of opening its IPO, but about to be a publicly traded third-party seller. That That is crazy. Now, also, they sell in other stores and stuff, but they started on Amazon. They're a huge business. They sell a lot of cell phone accessories, and that's just crazy to me. Well, let's get back to these questions over here. Hello. James said 10 10K square foot, two loading docks, six grade level, six grade level. Nice, man. That's huge. Those two loading docks are going to be massive for you. 10K square feet is going to be enough space to grow into. I'm liking your, your headspace here, James. I'm liking it, my friend. I am definitely liking your headspace. Amazon with Brian joined. What's up? How do you effectively gather reviews while you run PPC ads? So there's some great review software out there. Um, A, you should be using the early reviewer program, ERP for sure. Uh, early reviewer program, what it does is it, Amazon solicits your first five reviews. It's $65 per ASIN, very inexpensive. You enroll your SKU, your merchant SKU in the early reviewer program. And then for up to one year or until your product receives its first five reviews, Amazon incentivizes customers who purchase your product to leave a review by providing them with a two to four dollar coupon for leaving that review. So let's say you buy someone buys this monster that you're selling. Amazon emails the customer who bought this monster and says, hey, customer. Were you satisfied with this product? Please leave a review. If you leave a review, we'll give you a $3 coupon off your next purchase on anything on Amazon.com. I don't leave many reviews myself. I buy probably five to seven things on Amazon a week. I'm not a big review, uh, review lever, but when they throw me a coupon, I leave a review. So the early review program. And then there's also review software. Jungle Scout has one. Um, feedback five there's a bunch of different review softwares that you can use um, to request reviews as well do you have a course yes Efrain Prado Prado Purdue we do we do have a course um, it's in the link in our bio uh, it actually just it just opened a couple weeks ago so if you join now there's still tons of information to be shared live weekly coaching calls uh, access to the private Facebook group, so much information. I'm not gonna, you know, a lot of people know about it. Um, you don't though, which I'm excited that you know about it now. We'd, be, we'd love to have you in the program. Um, you know, it's not, it's not some bullshit, I can tell you that for sure. It's not, it's not your fucking regular guru's course, I can tell you that. It's jam-packed with information. And I know there's some people in, in this live who are in it, and maybe they can say something about it. Since I was born, yeah, Amazon O'Brien, placement service uh, you got to turn off your inventory placement then that's what's happening you have your inventory placement turned on type in the search bar on Amazon inventory placement in your search bar and then you have to turn it off to not get inventory placement fees um, now what that means is they may split your shipment 
So based on how many different fulfillment centers they've split it to, it may be more cost effective to pay the 40 cents because if you're sending it to five different fulfillment centers, the cost of shipping might add up to more than 40 cents per unit um, with the additional regular shipping that would be charged. So it's all about running the numbers, my friend. This is what I get paid to do. I get paid to f run numbers, figure out numbers, analyze metrics, um, analyze data. That is my job. Um, so if you can successfully operate and run numbers quickly and accurately, you'll be able to scale your Amazon business to astronomical heights, I can promise you. Grayson underscore Gladu said, Eric, what's up? First of all, thank you everybody for joining. If you're just joining us, throw me a little high five in the comments. Let me know you're participating over here. I love each and every one of you, respect all of you. I see you hustling out there. I see your Instagram posts. I see your stories. I see you getting it, making that bread. Super excited and motivated every time I see someone pushing themselves to success. Uh, we got some hearts flying in here. Appreciate you. If you got any questions, this is the time to ask. I'm going to be here for about maybe another 10 to 15 minutes just providing value to you because I appreciate all of you. And I wish I had someone to ask questions like this to, you know, seven years ago when we started this business. It would have allowed us to get to this level. It would have allowed us to get here probably two or three years faster just from the knowledge shared from a professional who knows what they're talking about. Uh, Grayson said, Eric, what's your best tip for repackaging and prepping yourself? Case is six units, listing is a three pack. I would probably put it in a bigger box. Um, depends too how you're shipping it. Are you sending it LTL? Are you sending it FTL? Are you sending it UPS? You know, how are you shipping it? Um, that's that plays a role in it as well because if you're sending it um, if you're sending it LTL and it's going on a pallet then it really doesn't matter then you're putting you know two sellable ASINs back in that box because it's three packs and it carries six in a box so it'd be two sellable orders or ASINs what we call them back in that box now what you have to also consider is the time spent closing that many boxes because let's say you use a bigger box and in that bigger box, you can get 15 sellable ASINs. Now you just eliminated, what did you eliminate? 15 um, divided by two, seven and a half minus the one box. So you just eliminated six boxes of taping and sealing and closing six boxes. Now, if you're producing 400 units, that adds up. You're talking 20, 30 boxes of time you're saving where you're stretching the tape over those boxes. So it's all about your headspace. You got to think about labor. Labor is costly. You got to save labor steps. You got to save, save movements whenever you possibly can because the less uh, labor you're spending on producing a product, the more profit goes back into your pocket. All your hazmat go to the same fulfillment center or do you get split off? We get split off. Um, we actually, we lucked out with this 15 pallet one back here. It all went to one fulfillment center. I think because it, it was real high quantities, but we send out about a hazmat shipment every other week, you know, between I would say 1500 to 3000 different ASINs on it. And 95% of the time they get split up to usually two to four different warehouses. And we just, we just send them in LTL and book a carrier and send them out. How to go about finding a good product ideas. Look at what's hot, look at what's trending and then look at what they're missing. Look at what's selling really well and then go and read those reviews and see what's missing. What are customers complaining about? You know, let's say you got a, like, let's say this scanner, right? Let's say it's selling phenomenal, this scanner. But let's say everybody complained that the scanner didn't stand up by itself. You couldn't put it on a table and it wouldn't stand up without falling over. So you might want to design the same scanner, very similar scanner that's able to stand because people love this scanner. And if it stood up, they would love it even more but nobody's selling a scanner that stands up. So you want to look at products that are moving well already and then, and then uh, revise them a little bit to provide to the consumer, you know? So I can, so I am sending, all right, we got Manny over here. 
with the hazmat elaboration here. So I am sending in a pallet of hazmat products. I always get proposed three different shipments so I can't split the pallet into three different. So I have to use placement service. Wait, why can't you split the pallet into three different shipments? It's as simple as taking the boxes off and uh, moving them onto a different pallet or sending them UPS. Um, I don't understand why you can't split the shipment. It's like, you definitely could. Like, let's say this right here, right? Like, this is the pallet that I'm trying to send to Amazon. And they split it to three different fulfillment centers. You just take two of the boxes and you put them on this pallet. And you send that pallet to the one fulfillment center. And you send this pallet to the other fulfillment center. And that's it. You essentially split up your hazmat shipment without paying inventory placement. So let me know if that explains what you're asking properly. You have to turn off your inventory placement, Manny. Your inventory placement's turned on. So when you turn off your inventory placement, it's going to split your shipment. And like I just showed you, you would literally, the way they split it, let's say they're sending one shipment to Indianapolis, one shipment to Las Vegas, another shipment to Cincinnati, you would just split up your products onto different pallets or in different UPS boxes and send them to Amazon. You have to turn off your inventory services to avoid that 40 cents fee. Amazon with Brian said, do you look at the one year Keepa charts or the last three months? I noticed prices are higher after March on a lot of products. So yeah, because of COVID-19, we've actually defaulted our Keepa chart uh, to one year. And you, you can go in your settings and default your Keepa chart as well uh, to one year. So you can definitely do that. Oh, by the way, I didn't even, I totally forgot just dropped an amazing youtube video not just amazing because i created it but amazing because it's jam-packed with information and it's all about fba pick and pack fees we explain to you how to calculate dimensional weight versus actual weight and how to train your brain to realize if you're missing out on opportunities and that just dropped at five o'clock today so after this live definitely go check that out um, but yeah we oh we have our default setting for keep it to one year since covid MNJS reselling. I need to take a drive one weekend, meet you guys. I'm not far, Philadelphia. Yeah, listen, we're, we're gonna be hosting some meetups right now because of COVID-19. We're not really, you know, meeting with, with people. It's just not safe. You know, Sebastian has kids. I don't wanna die. You know, just being, being honest here, but um, you know, until this whole uh, crisis kind of slows down or comes to a halt, which looks like it could be a while, maybe 2021, uh, which is unfortunate, but we're not really doing any meetups. But as soon as all this clears up, we're going to be traveling the country, meeting with y'all in person. Uh, two Extra Biscuits said, awesome. I'll check that out. Thanks, man. Sorry that didn't come out right. I've been searching wholesale liquidation on Google to search for local distributors, but all I've been finding is trash. Yeah, and that's the thing. So liquidation companies are completely different than distributors and, and, and wholesalers. Liquidation companies are taking products that are maybe discontinued, excess inventory, slightly damaged, dusty, and they're liquidating them for a discount. Um, we do do some liquidation buys. This does not mean you can't make money on liquidation buys. We've made some substantial money on liquidation buys, but you have to be mindful. It should be manifested. It should include expiration dates. You should know if it's new shelf pulls or if it's damaged or expired inventory. You gotta know all that information if you're, if you're buying liquidation pallets. Thanks for the answer, no problem. How are you ranking your products? Advertising, early reviewer program. Um, giveaways, social media ads. DMEDS11 said, do you use your own delivery company to deliver to Amazon? They'll talk to Amazon and get an appointment date. Yeah, we actually do. And if you use any third party carrier, 
um, that's not partnered with, car uh, with Amazon, if you use any third-party carrier to deliver your LTL or FTL, your less than truckload or full truckload uh, shipments, it's the driver or the company who's delivering those products responsibility to shed a, set up a shipment for you. So they make it very easy. All you have to do is process the inventory, let them know when it'll be ready to pick up. Just like over here, we got like 15 pallets of hazmat. I scheduled it with a, with a full truckload delivery driver, local to us, through a broker, and they scheduled the Amazon appointment. I scheduled it on Friday, they got an Amazon appointment for Saturday, and bickety-bam, they're gonna come pick it up. Have you ever had to use any ungating services? Kind of skeptical about some of those services. I've heard it can lead to account suspensions. Yeah, so so definitely you wanna you definitely wanna read Google reviews on those services. There's so many of them. People are advertising it on Instagram now. You just gotta be mindful of what services you're used because some will do it legitimately. They'll actually sell you a product and and. Uh, you know, send you that product and provide you the invoice. I know EE Distribution's one of them. Um, it's great for toys, so um, there's a gem for you, but you know, there's definitely some bad players. There's bad players always. There's always bad players. You just gotta keep, you gotta be street smart. You can't just be book smart, you gotta be street smart. And when you get that gut feeling like this is a bad player, usually go with it. 99.999% of the time I get that gut feeling. Like, I, it happens, you know, I meet somebody or they send me a message or I, it happens a lot with Instagram. I see their Instagram story and just part of me is like, this guy's a joker. This chick's like a, she's a phony, you know, just something like gives me that hint. 99.999% of the time, it's it's right. So go with your gut. If something doesn't seem right about their service, then then don't then don't go with it. What kind of inventory did you source from BJ's when you first started? Pretty much anything. If we could make a couple bucks on it, we were selling candy, chocolate bars, we were selling vitamins, fish oil, uh, we were selling snacks, chips, cookies, a set of minifin, selling anything we could make a couple bucks on. Toral Benny said, "Hey." How are you with so much sales? How do you do your monthly profit reports? Uh, so we actually, our repricer gives us, our repricer has our cost of goods in it, right? And then it, it takes away. Um, so profit's very, it's a very simple calculation. It's listing price minus referral fee minus FBA pick and pack fee minus storage fee minus advertising, minus cost of goods, and then what you have is your leftover gross profit. Then from there, to get your net profit, you would subtract expenses. What is an expense? This is an expense. This warehouse is an expense, right? All these computers over here, these are expenses the cost of operating a business. Those are your expenses. So to get your net profits, you would calculate your listing price minus the pick and pack fee, referral fee, storage fee, advertising, cost of goods, and then you would get your gross profit, and then to get your net profit, you would subtract your expenses. It's a pretty straightforward equation. Um, we actually have a great video about that too on YouTube. What kind of WMS are you using for your warehouse? What do you recommend for somebody that is at the beginning? We use one that we built. Um, cost us a lot of money. Took almost two years to build. Uh, this is a um, this is like a, almost a defeating question uh, because I know Sebastian has worked tirelessly. I'm talking tirelessly for two years with a team of five or six web developers, depending on what week it is, to build an inventory management system. Um, you know, and it's just because everything in the market didn't fit our business model. It doesn't fit Amazon sellers' business models. They advertise that it fits Amazon sellers' business models, but then you got merchant SKUs, you got FN SKUs, you got ASINs, you got UPCs, you got GTINs, you got all these different numbers that you need to track because, like, yeah, I could have this monster, but what if I sell this monster 
with the strawberry monster, with the watermelon monster, and when I put those together, they become their own product. They become their own ASIN, right? But it's got three UPCs in it, so it becomes very complicated to track all of that. So as far as like Skewval and I'm trying to think of the name of some other ones that we use, I can't remember. We used a lot of them and they were inferior. That's not to say they won't work for your business model, but I re what I recommend is getting your team into a Google Sheet and put locations in your warehouse and every time you scan a product in, put it in that location. Grayson, do you have any re recommendations where to find used pallets when first starting FBA? Uh, yeah, just Google pallet distributors in your area and there'll be a, a distributor local to you. There's one in every city, every town who sells pallets. We've dealt with um, over here, let me actually show y'all. Over here, you can actually see that we have a stack of pallets. So we get pallets all the time. And here's the stack of pallets. And we've used probably, I don't know, maybe four or five different pallet distributors, three or four different pallet distributors. And you just Google pallet distributors in your area and they'll set you up. You know, and then over here, we got our 15 hazmat pallets that are going out. This is an Amazon shipment that's going out. It was supposed to go out. Oh no, it's going out tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. You know, there's all some returns over here, some more returns over here. It's what we do. It's a regular day in the hustle. You feel me? It's a regular day in the grind. Would you ever collab with Derek James? Maybe do a YouTube video together? Yeah, absolutely. I got a lot of love for Derek. He's one of the few, one of the few large Amazon sellers that I got a lot of respect for. Uh, because he provides huge value. He really lives this shit. He shows his numbers, which I get it. People are like, oh yeah, I saw your numbers, but like, what's the profit? Like, listen, if you're doing $30 million a year, like, the, you got to really be fucking it up not to make a lot of money. You really got to be fucking it up. You know, and that's not to say there aren't large Amazon sellers doing $30 million a year and they'll be lucky if they clear a couple thousand dollars in profit, right? But like he's transparent and I respect transparency. So of course I would do that. And as soon as this COVID thing clears up, me and him, we've been messaging. We're definitely going to link up. What is the number one thing that really helped you scale? Uh, experience. Experience. You know, we didn't, it's not like we started off seven years ago with this. We started off in a basement, then got a smaller warehouse, a thousand square feet, then went to 2,500 square feet, then 10,000 square feet, then 15,000 square feet, and now here. Experience helped us scale. Trials and tribulations. And what I would do to be able to have, set, like stuff like this didn't exist seven years ago. There was no YouTube channels, how to sell on Amazon. There was no Instagram. Uh, people who solely had Instagram accounts that focused on selling on Amazon and every other post they were talking about some innovative way to grow your business and posting stories. There's no Facebook groups on how to sell on Amazon. All this didn't exist. So you, everybody who's in here right now is already a hundred leagues ahead of us because you have access to all this information. And not only do you have access to all the free information, but there's also people who for a fee will give you even more information. Now that's exciting stuff. And we still invest in our Amazon business. You know, we travel the country going to trade shows and, and just in back in February, we spent $6,000 for three days, a three day business trip, Sebastian and myself. We learned so much information, we met with other Amazon sellers. It was a game changer. So when we invest in our business, I think that is one thing that I could say really helped us is we invest in our business. Even when we have fear, even when that business trip's gonna cost us eight grand because Sebastian, me and Ted gotta go to California for a week. You know, we're like, you know what? It's worth it because we know we're gonna learn something while we're out there. I never flew back from a business trip or flew back from a conference or left an event um, or left a dinner or left a speaker meeting or left anything and was like, wow, that, I, that, that was a total waste of my time. I always find some sort of value in it. Uh, what products do you sell? Anything we can make money on, my friend. Helping you scale from 30K a month to 100K a month. Uh, volume, wholesale volume. That's really what helped us scale. You know, in the beginning, our, our average profit per sale was like $1.50. 
you know, but we started selling a lot more products, a lot more products. I'd rather sell, now there's more work involved with it, but I'd rather sell 100,000, or let's just say 10,000. I'd rather sell 10,000, that's a little more reasonable number. I'd rather say sell 10,000 orders a month at $1.50 profit for $15,000 in gross profit than sell 3,000 units a month at a $3 profit because that is only $9,000 in gross profits. Now the work to produce 100 or 10,000 orders versus 3,000 orders is a little more excessive, but a lot of people, what they don't consider is growing your Amazon account. What grows a big Amazon account? Reviews grow a big Amazon account. The more, if you're selling 10,000 versus 3,000, you have now over tripled your chances of getting more reviews. So let's say in that month you get, yeah, my phone is blowing up. Oh, I got a meeting at 8.30. What time is it, my friends? It's 7.06. I got some time. Um, thank God for phones, right? I would have forgot. I would have just been talking to you all. missed my meeting. Um, but what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So if you're, if you're selling three times as much inventory, so let's say in that month you would get 50 reviews. Now you have the chance of getting 150 reviews. You know, times 12 months, that's 1,800 reviews a year. You do that for a couple years, it just starts snowballing, you get serious reviews. I can't read that, it's like Russian or something, but the, to the person who said we were going to start on Amazon soon, I'm super excited. Reach out when you're ready, we, we, we'll give you a hand. Hi, can you shout me out? Uh, I cannot. When is my package coming? I'm not Amazon. I don't work at Amazon. What, what I'm going to need you to do is go into Instagram, type in Jeff Bezos, and then send a message to him. Ask him where your package is. Hey, Robo. Hey, Robo, you going to bring us with some, uh, you going to bring us with some Amazon heat right now, or are you just going to be talking that talk? All right, looks like that's it. You really think seller reviews play a big role? Yeah, huge. Huge role. Seller reviews play a huge role. It's part of their algorithm part of their algorithm and customer feedback I know me I shop on Amazon all the time I just bought something on Amazon like I don't know what was it four o'clock and right now it's seven so three hours ago I bought two things on Amazon three hours ago and the first thing I did was I clicked on the other sellers and I looked for who's in the buy box and then I looked who was in the buy box and I compared their reviews and their feedback to the person who was a dollar more than them. And I didn't care that the person was a dollar more than them because the person who was a dollar more than them had a substantially higher review count and a, a way more positive customer feedback rating. So I paid a dollar more. I'm going with the trusted seller. I want the trusted seller. Now maybe that's just because I'm an Amazon seller, but I know my father does that. I know my brother does that. And that's not because they talk to me about Amazon. They're just bargain hunters. They want the deal from the distributor or the Amazon seller who they know is going to provide the best service. And most likely the seller who's going to provide the best service is the seller with the highest customer feedback and the highest customer views because they have the experience. That's what Amazon's all about. And, and a lot of people discredit, discredit and discount the power that Amazon uh, seller reviews and customer feedback have. They have a huge impact on your sales. Think about it this way. Let's say you have 100 units, I have 100 units, and another seller has 100 units in the same listing, all priced at the same price, competing for the buy box. Seller number one has 100% customer feedback rating, 7,000 customer reviews. Me, I have, let's say, a, uh, we'll go 84% customer feedback rating, 5,000 reviews, right? So instantly, I'm not even in the game anymore. Seller one's got me beat. And now seller two has, let's say, 100% customer feedback rating, but only 20 reviews. Amazon's algorithm's gonna favor the first seller with 7,000 reviews and a hundred or and a 98 or whatever I said, 100% customer feedback rating. They're definitely gonna favor that seller. Uh, Ricardo, I'm gonna answer a few more questions, then I'm gonna get out of here. I gotta be at a meeting at 8.30. Um, Ricardo Lope said, hey, bro, how do you mitigate the risk of Amazon shutting your account? Uh, Keepa, 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 Keepa. Well, most of my answers to your questions will always be Keepa. Analyze the Keepa chart. 
Look at the keep a chart. Make sure there's other people selling on the listing. Now, there's always those one-off, you know, flukes where Amazon or some mellers, uh, some meller, a seller submits an IP complaint from a product that's never had one before. You know, so sometimes that happens. But to mitigate your risk, you got to do your due diligence and check those keep a charts. Check how many number of sellers there were. Check who's winning that buy box. And if you do that, you, and sell authentic products, don't sell, you know, used under new condition, you know, sell, make sure you're purchasing your products from authentic distributors and authorized distributors. All right, last two questions here. Do you get reimbursed if Amazon damages your item during transit to the customer? Yes. If it's an Amazon... Uh, mishap if they damage the product during shipping they will actually refund your account for that listing price for that fee and they'll refund the seller um, or they'll replace the unit with another unit and refund you on lunch break figured let me time in or tune in that's what's up Brian appreciate having you yes please do a keep a training I'd love to attend yeah, I'm thinking about it. It would be like a, you know, a, like an event. Make it like, it would be dope too. It would be dope. 100%. I'm excited about it. All right, everybody. I appreciate you spending your, what is it, Tuesday? Tuesday evening with me. Much love from myself. Thank you for hanging out in our distribution center over here. Love spending the evening with you. Have a beautiful Tuesday, and we'll see you in the next video. And if you join late, this will be on our YouTube in a couple of days. So check it out there. Stay lit.